Boom, 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 boom. Look at that, clean desk, clean bill of health. Let's rip into this while my brain is still working. <clears throat> so I actually don't know if I've done this yet, but this is a quick rundown on how we remove the top of an AE1 program, because it is very different from an AE1 in a few notable ways. Um, one, it's infinitely better, in my opinion, and there's no tungsten wire. So I feel like that kind of ties in with the, it's infinitely better. Uh, there is this mechanism, which is fairly easy. It's just a washer and uh, pop that in, righty tighty, lefty loosey. That's gonna blow up because this isn't secured down because it's broken. Uh, <laughs> That shouldn't happen for you, but if it does, there's this plastic washer and then a crimped metal washer. Those go there, and then this sits on top of there, like so. This goes there, and then you got a little C-ring there. You can use these if you want, or you can just use an old set screw to do a little lift. You wanna make sure you catch that because it will jump out at you. Get your brakes checked, guy. All right, lift that up. There should be another little brass washer there. And then this one's kind of tricky. There's this little like rubber stopper and sometimes this will come off and sometimes it won't. I always like to take it off because if you don't, you just yank the top off. Sometimes it will catch the uh, mode selector. And sometimes what'll happen is I won't see it there. I'll put the top back on and the camera doesn't work because it's not set in properly. It doesn't happen a lot, but it happened enough to where I just would take it off. I always like to remove the back of the camera. That's a personal preference. Taking this off, you want to be careful because this is not a metal piece. It's that same kind of plastic composite. So if you torque too much on this, you could potentially damage it. So I just be careful. And I like to keep all of that kind of tension together. Another C ring right here. I want to be careful with this as well because the pillar on which it is sitting is also plastic so you could potentially damage it so I would probably not use this like I just did I would use little uh, these deals get in there and just kind of pry it out and again you want to catch that so you don't lose it the ASA is set at about 100 to keep that in mind for later and then that's pretty much it. So now what we'll do, tilt this back. Kind of the same screw layout as an AE1. Two in the back, two in the sides, and then two in the front. So we'll have to remove the front plate, which isn't too big of a deal, but you know, just another, another thing you got to do. Screws are gone there. I think they're in here. These four, I'm gonna corral right there. And then the top should come off like so. Now, if you're gonna remove the top fully, there are three wires, as you can see. There's this black one that's connected to the flash sync port. There's this green one down here and this white one up here. The saying that I've used, the green, rows in the valley like the trees and then white is like the snow on top of the mountain that just always helped me it's a really stupid thing but it does help so that should be good there so there's a lot of there's a lot of little screws in here and I was like oh man I wonder where all these came from but this is answering my questions actually that would be why the shutter button wasn't working Interesting. Uh, this is the little plunger, the little brass plunger that sits in there. And then obviously all of the screws are missing here. That just blew up on me, that's fantastic. So I'm gonna remove this. 
And I'm going to just remove the circuit so I don't have to worry about it. Simplify my life a little bit here. Maybe. Job done there. All right, cool. Just like that, easy peasy. Lemon squeezy, we're missing a lot from in here. So let's wrangle up what we got. We got one of those. We have a single spring. We have the rest of these. So it looks like both springs are, or two of the three springs are missing, which is awesome. And then, yeah, should just be a right hoot and holler. So what I'm assuming happened is, well, let's see first of all, before I start making assumptions. Okay, so the catch mechanism works, which is good, because I've talked about this before, where the plastic piece that sits right there adds the tension for the uh, clutch stopper. Sometimes that'll snap in half and then create like a lot of infinite winding issues. That's not occurring here, which is good. Um, however, now I need to locate either pieces that fell in the camera or spare parts of my own because they might just not exist anymore. Um, but yeah, I gotta reattach all of that. And then from there, see if the problem persists. I'll be interested to find out. Um, that will be another little video. I think I'm gonna call it right now because I'm gonna do some investigating. It's just gonna be me quietly poking around, which does not really make for the best of content. Um, because my head's going to be over top of this, and you'll just see the top of my beanie, and I don't think that that's really great for a visual experience. And at the end of the day, really, what I am is a storyteller, so visual storyteller, you know. But anyway, I think that will do it for now. If you have any questions, comment down below. Be sure to subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out on part two of this repair. As riveting as it has been, yeah, thank you for watching. Appreciate the support. Like the video if you enjoyed it. I'll catch you on the next one.